marriage and telling the tragedy of the death of her daughter, Olivia, Jody. Thank you so much for your courage. You're a hero to all of us. I want to thank Beth Morrison from Indivisible Westford for inviting me to say a few words. And I want you to know that there are legislators like myself that are standing with you today. And I wanted to recognize one of them who is also here today, State Senator Barbara Italian. Thank you, Barbara, for being here. Thank you all for being here today. I admire you for taking part in this historic national display of democracy in action. Across the nation today, people of all ages, all backgrounds are sending a strong message that thoughts and prayers are not enough. What we know is that only smart gun reform can end senseless gun violence in Massachusetts. And I am honored to stand here with you today to demand that reform now. We have followed the lead of the brave students, the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. We have transformed some survivors to leading activists in the national conversation to ban assault weapons and expand background checks. And today, you have heard from high school students across this region from survivors making that same call today. I want to thank them for their courage for telling their stories as well. From them, we have learned that each of us can incite meaningful change if we unite as a community, as a commonwealth, and ultimately as a nation, and keep fighting until these laws reflect our values. This is a truly special movement. You're unafraid to stand up for what you believe in and to speak truth to power. And I am proud to join you in sending this message to the gun lobby. But what I want to say is, it's really not the gun lobby that affects these laws, whether in Washington, D.C. or Beacon Hill. It is people who perhaps have different views from those of us standing here today, that anytime there's a tragedy that happens, Anytime there is a bill filed, protect our public safety. They are calling us as elected officials to stop that legislation. So what I am calling on you today to do is don't stop here. Contact your legislators, contact your elected officials so that we take this movement and turn it into meaningful, profound change. What does that change mean? Well, to me, it is that the right to bear arms does not supersede our collective right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And that the United States Constitution guarantees protections for all of us, not just gun owners. Now, as Americans, we all talk a lot about freedom, but let's not make absent that that freedom includes the freedom from fear. When you hear people talk about protecting American freedoms, let's make sure we're also talking about freedom of public safety. And I want to be absolutely clear, although this action needs to happen nationally, there are steps that we can take here in Massachusetts. So I encourage you to learn more about the legislation that was already talked about, the Extreme Risk Protective Order filed by Representative David Linsky and Representative Marjorie Decker. What this bill would do would allow family members, health care providers, or law enforcement to petition a judge to suspend an individual's access to firearms if they are deemed a danger to themselves or others. Think about Jody Marchand's story. Think about Nicholas Cruz, and if this law was in place, maybe the guns he had could have been taken away from him before he slaughtered 17 students and teachers at Parkland, Florida. So 
So let me conclude and say that gone are the days where we will sit silently by and let the Second Amendment threaten our constitutional rights to life, peace, liberty, and safety. We have the ability to change history. Let's get started today. Thank you very much.